and welcome back to the Awfully Irish podcast. How are we getting on, guys? Not too bad. So, today we're joined with Mark Aldrich. Um, you know, his heritage is Irish enough. I thought he was completely Irish, you know, but he'll do. No. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for getting on today. Um, oh, my pleasure. You're an actor, but you've been in, like, basically every stretch of it. You've done audio stuff, you've been on TV, you've been in movies, and you've done a lot of theatre. Yes. I was very That's impressed true. by that. Uh, well, um, yeah, I started out in theater. I, you know, the, the TV and film came later. It was I, I grew up on the east coast of the United States, and uh, until recently, there was there just wasn't as much TV and film on this side of the country. There were bits and pieces. For the first few years I was in New York, it was pretty much Law and Order, and any Law and Order franchise, and that was about it, except for the odd movie that came through or commercials or things like that. But things have changed a lot now, which is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, because you have a lot of stuff that comes out of New York. Like, yeah. biggest one I can think of maybe, just TV wise, Brooklyn Nine Nine's doing pretty big stuff right there now, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. Um, so many marvelous Mrs. Maisel is here. Um, Evil uh, Gotham was here for years. Uh, the, uh, some of the Marvel uh, streaming shows were here. Um, they're now sort of moving over to to Disney Plus, away from where they were, so they're in hi- hiatus. But yeah, there just there's so many here that I can't even think of them all, which is fantastic for us actors. Yeah. Mm. And I'm um, sorry I'm not Irish. I I wish I were. No, look, look, look. Put it that way. We we have everyone on. I was just make. I was just kidding. I was trying to make a joke and it wasn't too funny. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, how long have you been an actor? Like, t- tell us like how you started and how you've gotten to where you are now. Well, it's funny. I I mean, I started in school. You know, when I was a, a kid over here in fourth grade is about when I, I started. Um, I was lucky I had some amazing teachers really early on who encouraged the students to. Virginia, which is out of Washington, D.C. You know, Broadway and TV and film isn't something that you really aspired to at that point. I mean... I was a fan of those things, but I never imagined that I would actually do them myself. Um, and But then one thing led to another. I went to school. I thought I was going to become a lawyer. And, um, and uh, before I knew it, I had my degree in, uh, in theater. And um, before I left school, I had already uh, booked some, um, some non-union work uh, right out of school. So I went on the road with, with a couple of shows, and uh, one thing led to another. And I sort of never looked back, uh, which is, I know, unusual, especially for uh, for actors in the U.S. If they don't hit it big quick, usually there are lots of struggle stories along the way. And then, not that it was always easy for me at all, but, um, but I've been very fortunate that I just kept working and I kept moving forward. And as, as things changed here in the U.S., my career changed along with them, which is, you know, I guess sort of what you need to do as an actor is adapt and keep moving. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of change going on in the world right now. Uh, we're seeing that yes. go, like a wildfire. Um, but a lot of actors are kind of stuck because, well, what, how much acting can he do at home? Uh, very, very impressive. I think the BBC made a play using Zoom and like B-roll. I, yeah, I saw that. I didn't watch it, but I saw that it happened. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's challenging everyone's creativity right now. Um, uh, I know here in New York, you know, we were hit really hard, really early. And um, and people are still very skittish. No one's really doing much of anything, even in terms of just being outside of your apartment. So, But I have friends who do Zoom uh, play readings and... Um, concerts and benefits and you know everybody's trying to remain creative but uh nobody really knows where the where the end lies so we're just like i said just trying to adapt and move forward yeah, that's fair. i guess all we can do yeah mm-hmm. yeah it's it's a hard time to be an actor right now uh we, we've had our, our fair fair share of actors on the last week uh last two weeks even and uh all the same just no work gotta keep busy yeah, yeah. However you can, you know. I, I'm, I'm telling myself that I'm going to learn a new instrument, which uh, hasn't started yet. 
Um, but I have made a serious dent in my Netflix queue, so there's that. Fair play. Do you watch Snowpiercer? Uh, I do watch Snowpiercer actually. Yeah. Um, so oh, one of one of my uh, one of my good friends is is uh, Lily, the redheaded sort of uh, first class passenger who causes a lot of trouble. Oh, yeah. I, I asked again this before. <laughs> yeah, she she was yeah. in the Slenderman uh, movie as well, wasn't she? The which movie? Was she in the Slenderman movie? Possibly. She works a lot. Um, her name is Carrie O'Malley. Talk about someone who you would think is Irish. Very Irish name. Yes. Oh, she's... Uh, what, what's her character's name again? Uh, oh. Lily, I think. Yeah. Yeah, she's cool. I like that character. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's really so cool. yes, I I need to watch Snowpiercer. I'm supporting friends as well as watching good television. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's pretty. Which there is a lot because there's a lot. Of, there's a lot of good TV. I think the Emmys, the nominations came out yesterday. Didn't yeah, they? it just came out yesterday. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, what is the season two trailer? Yeah, yeah. They've oh. already. They haven't finished shooting season two apparently, but they they know that it's happening. So, yeah. That's good. That's good. Uh, yeah, the Emmy nominations, it felt kind of strange for them to come out in the middle of everything that's going on. It yeah, seemed sort of... so weird. It was sort of out of, you know, like, out of sync with reality that the Emmys would still be happening while everything else has stopped. It was very odd. Yeah, like, we're all watching old TV and old movies, like, just nothing exactly. really coming out. All our favorite right. series stopped, and yeah. then, bang! Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Where are, you, where are you located? Are you in Dublin? Uh, no. Um, no, Offaly. County Offaly. Offaly, okay. Ireland so, is one of my favorite places in the world to go. So, um, mm. in fact, in fact, I I would have hoped to have been there now if we could travel. But oh wow, we all know how that goes. I was supposed to be in Ohio. Oh really? Yeah. Where in Ohio? Um, I all. I don't know. It's uh, I don't know near Dayton, I think. Okay. I only ask because when everything shut down over here, I was on tour with a, the um, the national tour of a Broadway show, and uh, we got we shut down in Ohio. So uh, we were in oh. Columbus, Ohio, and uh, my wife was sick at the time, and so rather than traveling, we stayed there. So we ended up spending the first six weeks of our shutdown in a, a hotel in a very very empty Columbus, Ohio. It was very surreal. Wow. Yeah, it, must be weird. it was very Stephen oh, King. So there was almost is, no one in the exactly, hotel. Yeah, no, sorry, it is Columbus, Ohio. That's, oh, really? <laughs> couldn't think oh, of it. Funny. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> my aunt yeah. and uncle, they live over there. Yeah, I was oh, going to okay. stay with them for a couple of weeks. Okay. It's a great town, city, I should say. Um, but like everything else, you know, it, it was empty at the time. Yeah. So we didn't really get to experience much of it other than the, the Holiday Inn. So. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, no, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad over there where you are now, especially in America. It's, it's yeah. uh, well, you know, it, it it's it's flaring up in different places around the country. It's it, New York actually did a pretty good job of of shutting things down and getting it under control, um, but now we're watching the same things that we went through happen in other parts of our country, and it's, uh, it's our country's just so big. It's so hard to get a, a handle on it all together when we're not when each state is doing its own thing um so we're hopeful that uh, i mean like right now in addition to me not being able to travel internationally except to a handful of countries um there are 34 states out of our 50 that i can't travel to without quarantining if i come home so we're a real like patchwork right now I'm still trying to figure things out Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, pretty sucky. Yeah, yeah. it is. How was it over there? Um, the pubs are still closed. Pubs right. are closed. Yeah. It's great. And that's that, that's pretty much all to it, you know? No, it's not. But, uh... <laughs> basically, pubs are closed, wear a mask. Besides that, yeah. life is back to normal. Yeah. Really? Well, uh, well good for you. Good You're for not you allowed guys. to go on holidays unless you have a... Uh, if you're if you're still collecting the unemployment payment for like when we lost your job, you're that's taken oh. off if you can't go on out of the country. 
Uh, oh, I got you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so it's um. It's kind of dying down over here. I think they're reopening the schools at the end of August. We had forty cases yesterday, or something. Did we? So. Oh wow. And our reproduction rate is still under one. It's been like our that for a bit now. Reproduction rate. You mean our yeah. infection rate? Whatever, like reproduction of the reproduction <laughs> of the virus, Jared. There's, there's a big difference in. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I I was fortunate enough to be an extra, in a, in a one one production, the day before the country went in lockdown. It was great. Got the day oh, off. Wow. Day off school. Go on the next day. Quarantine. Yes. Uh -huh. It's perfect. Did you get your books though? I did. Oh. I had to do it separately. I think. All oh, right. Fair enough. Um. Okay. So most recently, okay. A lot of these shows that you've been in are ones that my mom loves. So, uh, most recently you were in Madame Secretary. So, I was. What, what was your experience like on that? That's a big show. Uh, with a big cast. It was. It was. Um, it was the la It was their last season. Um, and it was. It was great. Um, I. Uh, I had my first stunt double for that, which was exciting because I was supposed to be in a car accident and they didn't trust me to do it myself, which was probably smart. Um, and uh, it was a really friendly set. I didn't work with any of the um, the principal cast. My scene was with the the guest star that week, um, who actually turned out to be uh, um, Sam Robards, who is Jason Robards' son. So he's sort of plugged into Hollywood royalty there. Um, and then it turned out that our director was James Whitmore Jr. And I don't know if you know James Whitmore. You ever see Shawshank Redemption? Yes. yes. We're massive fans of Shawshank, yeah. James Whitmore is the, uh, I forget his character name, I should know it, but he's the, the older inmate who gets released but can't Brooks. deal with Brooks. Thank you. Um, so that was James Whitmore, and I had actually done a stage play with him years ago, and the director of my episode of Madam Secretary turned out to be his son, also named James Whitmore. So we had a really fun uh, time talking about old old Hollywood and his father and things was like, were like that. But um, yeah, that was another one that I forgot to mention in all the shows that are shooting in New York was Madame Secretary. Yeah. Oh, that's, awesome. that's, such, that's such a weird thing. Like <laughs> him being in that. And you, you guys are talking about like Hollywood's different now or acting is different. Like there, there's a big difference to like what we thought of actors 40 years ago compared to now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Hollywood is a lot more plastic. I think I'd like to I think that it's more It's a lot more public now. Like it's, yeah, it's a lot more if public. You want to be up there, your privacy like the further you go up, the further your privacy goes down. Exactly. Yeah. And it's all packaged, you know, it's they they come up with casts on paper a lot of the times as opposed to giving it to them because of their acting ability necessarily. Um mm -hmm. Not true all the time, but but I know that you know some of the really really powerful agents can go to producers and pitch them a script and a cast, everything all fully formed, and say here do this, and so that's very different. But yeah, I mean I think about years ago and the the, the greats from forty the golden years, and uh, we don't have we have we have a lot of celebrities and we have fewer actors. I think. Yeah, I that's a great way to put it actually. Yeah, the reality them. TV is very hot in Hollywood right now. I'm just thinking because just the Kardashians. It's all like, fake uh, with, as well. Would those, would those guys consider oh, yeah. themselves actors? Because technically they're on TV. Um, they, they, they would like to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think that's where the line between celebrity and actor blurs. Because mm -hmm. they're on television and and like you said, it's it's all fake it's all scripted oh yeah they, they tell them what to do so it's not really it's not yeah. reality it's in a way they are acting um but it's not what we would normally think of as an actor so yeah, yeah. i'm not a huge fan of reality television <laughs> no no neither am i well it kind of depends like i love the ones that are based outdoors mm. uh -huh. like survival ones because I, I know i know some of the people and it's really impressive i, I like time uh -huh. celebrity that's pretty big over here in Ireland. I mean, you know, like I'm oh, okay. get me out of here. Yeah, is it is yeah. that big over in the U.S.? No, no, no. Not. I don't even. 
No. <laughs> but I don't watch much reality right. television, so. Oh, uh, fair enough. <laughs> I've spent I've spent quarantine watching uh, Welsh murder mysteries on Netflix, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm not just... their I'm not their target audience. <laughs> Welsh murder mystery. Is that a show I've never heard of? That? Uh, no, there's some really, really good ones out there. There's one called Hinterland that you should you should check out. It's really, really good, and uh, and you know it, it's in English and Welsh, and they go back and forth depending on which characters are in which scenes, and uh, it's really moody and dark and very noir. It's pretty cool. Huh. Yeah, my uh, my mom watched that. Does she? All right. Yeah, All right. I watch it. I watch it. I'm in shows and watch shows that your mother likes, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> you two would probably get yeah, along you're really well. Ideal character. <laughs> ideal, ideal actor. Character as well. You're a bit of a character. <laughs> um, and then, going on from that, uh, my mom absolutely loves, and uh, we've sat down many, many a day and spent the entire day watching it, Bull. And oh, okay. Yeah. How was your experience in that? Because that's a great show. It was it was really fun. It was their first season, um, and uh, and it was pretty early on. I can't remember which episode it was of the season, but um, it was fun because I was the the jury foreman. So I got I was there throughout all of the the um, the courtroom scenes, and um, it was a really lighthearted set. Uh, people had a lot of fun. Michael Weatherly was talk about characters. He was definitely a character. Um, and uh, I think yeah, it, it, it was a, it was an interesting experience too because uh, one of my closest friends from the Broadway production of Newsies was also in my scene as the expert witness in the courtroom. So, <laughs> so we, I mean, we both knew because we talk all the time. We knew that we would be there together, and we got to just hang out and have fun on set. And uh, that never happens. Uh, huh. But yeah, that that show is is doing really well. Uh, I mean, you never know in a season one what's going to happen, but they're doing really. They've they've hit their stride, I think. Hmm. That's pretty cool as well. Just way you said it's doing well. Well done, man. Yeah. Um, with a lot of shows and with, like casting calls, I think there's a lot of luck whether someone or something does well. Do you know what I mean? Because you got to have a lot of luck. You have got to got a good agent. You got to be really good. Got to have the right line. It's just. It's it's very hard to get into have a good show or have you know make it big in acting and stuff you know. I oh, think absolutely. that that making a big thing can be pretty bad for your mental health. Yeah. Like if you suffer from like bad mental health in the first place, and you're going to these casting things, you're not getting picked. It's like a talent competition, and you're just giving it your best. And if your best isn't accepted multiple times, you're gonna feel pretty bad. Uh, Especially reject- your initial problems. Well, well, yes. Um, rejection is definitely part of the game. I mean, it's just that's just the way it is. I, I, I go into auditions. I mean, the way I try to keep myself sane about it is, I go in, I do my job, and when I leave and the door closes behind me, I don't think about it again. I, hmm. you just can't. Um, yeah, you got a good way about if, it. If, if they call again great then you take the next step and you you know you you keep moving forward but um i try you know and of course every once in a while one gets under your skin and you think something went really well and then you don't hear and it, you know it does play tricks with your brain but for the most part i think you have to be able to just do your job in the room and leave it behind you when you go home and then do something nice for yourself you know take yourself out to lunch or go see a movie well can't see a movie now. <laughs> Can't go out to lunch now either. Actually, but, yeah. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> just thinking. You're not getting paid for lunch. Cool thing, you're not getting yeah. paid for the movie. Good luck. Sure. <laughs> yeah, no, that's one cool thing in New York. Was it like you can go to? If you went to like all the restaurants in New York, like for every meal or whatever, like in a row, a new restaurant every day or something, it would take you like. You, you would never. Time. Finish. Yeah. You would never finish. By the time you were done, half of the ones you'd gone to at the beginning would be closed, and they'd all be new places, and you'd have to start over. And they'd all be turned into Starbucks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All the place by chain restaurants. Yeah. That is true. I mean, we're fighting it, but even New York is sort of sliding down that slope. But 
a shame because uh, normally those little family run places are so much better. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, in, in Ireland, we've plenty. Like we haven't gotten, they haven't been damaged too much by uh, the big chains. I was surprised the last time I was there that there was a Super Mac on the Aran Islands. Super Max, yeah. Seriously? Yep. I don't know that. Yeah, there's. Yeah. So. We're we went to Inish here. We didn't get Inish. <laughs> you know, what were you like doing there? Uh, just traveling. What's your just... favorite spot in Ireland? Ooh. Um, that's a list. one. Put them in order. Uh, no. I'll just say, i just say I... I normally head west when I get there. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'll just put it that way. And if you know, and pretty much anywhere on the west coast, I can I can find ways to be happy. Although I, I do love time in Dublin as well. You know, uh, I, I anywhere I am in Ireland, I'm going to be happy. But the first thing I do is is head west. Yeah, because I think when people think of Ireland, the first thing they think of is Dublin. But Dublin mm -hmm. is tiny. Dublin is like one of the smallest counties we have over here, and it does not represent the rest of. We, I live on a bog. I live next to a farm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's for the majority of us. No, yeah. Um, Dublin. When people think about it, they go they straight. You know, and you even said it yourself. You were like, uh, "Where are you guys from? You're from Dublin." I just thought, no. Right. Right. <laughs> It's because, it, yeah. and it's not against you. It's just, it's just because it's what you associate Irish, Irish people with being from Dublin. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very yeah. international now. Like it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't feel as Irish as many of the other places where you go because it's become such an international city. Um, which I don't mean as any sort of knock on it. It's just, huh. it's a big, it's an international city. Uh, yeah, but like normally, if you're going to Dublin, you kind of expect like. Leprechauns going around in their big green shirts with a top hat on and a right. pint of Guinness right. in one hand. Yeah. But, uh, you know, when you don't see that, most people turn around. A fair play, you went the whole way. <laughs> no, you went uh, the Galway where the actual, you know, leprechauns hang out, man. Well, yeah. Good on you. Yeah. Actually, a lot, <laughs> lot, lot, lot of them in Limerick City these days. Yeah. yeah. Fair play to them. And sure, you know, they all owe us money, but sure, they won't pay us back. Like, the bastards. Just, there's, no go there's no going back to get that off them. You slice like, like my dad used to say, you know, you'll never trust a dwarf. Not, not a dwarf. What are they? Leprechauns. Jesus. <laughs> never trust a dwarf. Yeah. <laughs> never, tr never trust a leprechaun. You know, they'll, they'll fuck you over. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, you'll find really Irish places in Dublin. Depends where you go. Uh, but normally on the outskirts. And if you want like a really, really deep Irish experience, go to Cork or Galway instead. Yeah. I love Galway. Yeah, I haven't spent much time in Cork, although I know um, at least one branch of my family is from down there. Uh, but we've we've lost track of each other over the years. Um, yeah. Uh, but I know one branch of the family came from Cork, so mm. that's next on the list. Although I do like Sligo and Donegal, also. Um, mm. It's quieter, and I like that. Coming from New York, that that's something I value. Yeah, it must be so different. For you from living in New York to go to Galway or Donegal, where it's, you know, everybody knows each other and sure, you know the guy up the road because he, you know, he's your dad's son's friend. It's right. And, well, you don't, you probably don't recognize a lot of people you meet in New York, right? Um, you'd be surprised. It's, it's, obviously an enormous city, but especially especially in the theater or acting world. We, we travel in the same circles and we go to the same parts of the city all the time. So if I'm in the Broadway district, we call it the Broadway box. Um, I'm going to run into to people I know every couple of blocks. Um, it's, it's the, it's the, the biggest small town or the smallest big city. Um, you can imagine like you, you run into people, you know, here it's, very strange. Although I will say when I was in Ireland, I ran into people I knew almost everywhere I went, even people from the States that were over there that I didn't know. Um, the last time I was there, got, I got off the plane uh, and my wife and I, we were in Kong the first day. And an, again, another friend of mine from the cast of Broadway's Newsies was visiting there with his family and we thought we were going to come close, but we weren't sure they were staying further north than we were. 
And uh, and I got out of the car when we pulled into town, and I looked down the block, and he was standing on the corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, I guess when when I think in New York, it's just that if I if I went to New York, I wouldn't know anybody, you know. <laughs> I got well now all you my would. Family. Well, yeah, not you. <laughs> Me and you go for a pint, go for a cup of tea, have some tea, old man, whatever. It's cool. It's chill. Absolutely. <laughs> we had uh, one lady on, Tiffany Schley. I, I think I said that right. Yeah, you did. And she said there's like this Irish shop that opened like nearby her. And I just said like all these different like Irish things, like Irish crisps and different snacks. And she went crazy in there. She got loads. We are discussing that last night. Like she's a, she's, <laughs> oh, she's a chef. And... Uh, Oh okay. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, I saw her on your on your queue. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Sound. <laughs> yes, I've been known to order Irish food and have it delivered to my apartment. It's... What do you mean by Irish food? Like I like if it's for me, it's uh, it's the brown bread, um, the Irish sausages, which I love. Um, I don't do the I don't do the puddings. I don't do the breakfast puddings. Um, and someone told me recently I need to give them another try, so I'm not sure. Your your mic comes. Oh, sorry. Better. It's uh, back. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah pudding's nice. Uh, black it? pudding it tastes really weird for most people, uh, but white pudding uh, that that's all right. I like black pudding. I'll I'll have both, no problem. For <laughs> white pudding. Next time I'm there, I will give it another shot. Full Irish breakfast, just perfect. Change your life. <laughs> Probably clog your arteries, but it's, it's change your life. True, true. You got your scrambled egg, you got your beans, you got your, your toast, you got your sausage, your rasher. Yep. Your pudding. Nice warm cup of tea beside us. Yeah, Separate see, here egg. in New York, we don't really do that. For the most part, if you have breakfast, you have it on the way out the door as you're running to be someplace. So. Mm. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, like, you guys got like a real stressed atmosphere in the States. Like, it's really like, gotta go here, gotta go here, gotta do this, gotta dash. Yeah, yeah, especially in New York. I mean, that's just the way of life here, which so is why what's going on now is so strange, because you can't do anything. And New Yorkers don't know what to do with that, you know? Yeah. Uh, were, the, were the riots, uh, or I guess were the protests uh, bad or good where you were, or? Um, well, I mentioned that we were in Ohio at the beginning mm. of the shutdown, and we were about a block from the state capitol. Um, and that was... It seems like forever ago, but you know, at the beginning, there were people who were protesting having to stay home. They didn't. They, you know, they they were protesting that the the stores were closed and that they had to stay in their homes. Um, yeah. So those were the protests that I saw firsthand. Because uh, uh, even though my wife kept telling me not to, I kept going over to see them because I was curious about what was happening. And um, and they became increasingly political as it went on at first it was really just a bunch of people saying my business is going to die if you don't let me open up i'm going to go broke and my family will start let me open my business um and you know agree or disagree you can understand why someone would be panicked at that point but then yeah. it became more political yeah. and then it became about uh you know there were people there with with their ar-15 rifles and you know walking around in full camouflage and it, it became something very different um and luckily we left not long after that so i didn't really stick around for too much of that that's that's, that's terrifying in the first place but that's really weird for the rest of the world because exactly. i think it's yeah. only only you guys uh mexico and is it guatemala are the only places that have like guns as a constitutional right and uh people walking around with ars sounds terrifying to me if i seen that in dublin i would go the other way i mean it's still shocking before all of this in New York, it was still surprising to me to, to we have armed, uh, you know, police units in the city and they're frequently in the subway stops or whatever patrolling. And sometimes you'll see them if it's different units will will carry that those weapons. And 
it was always sort of jarring to see them on the platform when you're waiting for the train or things like that. That's that was weird enough. But then to see just regular people off the street uh, gathering at a state capitol and and all carrying their you know semi-automatic rifles was yeah it's even for us you know and New York is pretty strict on on stuff like that compared to some of the other states um, but it, it yeah. I wish we had a better handle on that. Yeah, because it is it's scary times at the moment. Uh, I can't imagine being in your position, living in the United States right now. Like you got some of the worst cases of COVID, and then people are protesting, and and you know everyone you're entitled to protest. It's just it's a bit scary. You know, if if they go bad, they get scary very fast. Exactly. It, it's kind of amazing how quickly we went from thinking of ourselves as, you know, sort of being this shining example for the rest of the world about, you know, freedom and liberty and taking care of each other and, and, and how quickly we found ourselves in this position now, which is, you know, we're, we are definitely the, the worst in the world in terms of COVID right now. I mean, there's just no denying that. Um, and then yeah. the violence that is, has that is sprung up as a result of and around that is really it's exposed a lot of things about our country that I think a lot of people either didn't realize or didn't want to realize. So we, we got some work to do over here. What do you, what do you think got you into this position? I, I wish I knew. Coffee for that question. I know I've said that. I wish I knew. I really do. I mean, I think it's been coming for a long time. I think there's a real disparity here um, between uh, there's not just a racial divide, but there's an economic divide. Like there, there are the very, very wealthy, and then there's pretty much the rest of our country. Mm. Um, like it's confusing right like now. It's such a uh, high standard of living compared to the rest of the world. Uh, you think that would just lead to like happiness and positivity and hard work and right. it doesn't lead to hard work, but uh, you wouldn't think well, it would lead to like interesting. visions. It's right now because we're each at the first of each month a new a new round of bills is due for everybody you know here. Um, so we're seeing uh, like we were talking earlier about the mom and pop shops and and restaurants and things like that, and those are some of the first ones to go or going under because they haven't been open since March. Um, but in addition to that, I have a lot of friends and and many of them are actors and for obvious reasons, there's, there's no work to keep you here and that's why we come to New York. Um, so a lot of people are moving. Mm. And, uh, somebody sent me a picture the other day, Hell's Kitchen is, is one of the neighborhoods right by all of the Broadway theaters. Um, in Midtown Manhattan, and they sent me a picture of one of the streets there, and it was on both sides. There were moving trucks loading up because it was the end of the month, and um, people can't justify staying if there's no work, so they're packing up and leaving. And I, I don't really know what it's going to be like when things get back to normal, whatever normal is going to be. Um, but a lot of people are leaving right now because that quality of life that we all assumed was here is it was taken away really quickly. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of friends who are staying with family or just letting their apartments go and, and moving back wherever home was, you know, wherever they came from. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what New York is like when we start to come back, because it's a, it's a difficult place to live when everything is going well, just because it's expensive and it's crowded. And, um, and right now, you can't do any of the things that you came to New York to do. Mm. Um, you know, we, our, our lives here aren't really focused on our homes, on our apartments. They're usually pretty small and functional and they're, they're there so that you can be here to, to do other things. And throughout all of this, we're having to focus on the fact that we're stuck in those small spaces. Um, so you make a lot of sacrifices to live here in New York. And right now the, a lot of the benefits have been taken away. So, Oh, this conversation got heavy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I kind of wanted to, like, catch you off. 
So uh, I accomplished that. <laughs> no, not, not in the bad way, just... <laughs> He's a dick, Jesus. <laughs> no, Poor it's, 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 part, nah, it's part of what's going on in the country he lives in, so I'd like to hear his perspective on the issue. Oh, yeah, yeah. I get that. No, it makes and it's actually nice to talk to. It's actually nice to talk about it and to talk about people who have a different perspective, because um, mm. most of my circle is is here in New York, and uh, we're all going through the same thing. So it's nice to hear what it's like for you where you are, and what it's what you see looking outside. You know, from the outside looking in here, what you're seeing and what the perception is. So, mm. yeah, because we just get the most extreme stuff in the news. Like, no, I'm sure. We're happy and dandy in Ireland. We're able to go outside and do anything, just wear a mask. Meanwhile, you yeah. see on the on the news like America in flames or our numbers going into the like thousands. Oh yeah, that, that's pretty scary. Yeah, because like, gonna, you see our I numbers think... like forty. We don't really right. take into account how small we are in comparison. So we, our own problems, but not as obvious. Yeah, we're, right o- we're over four million uh, cases. Uh, now and I think today we're going to hit 150,000 deaths. Oh, Jesus. Uh, yeah. It's horrible, isn't it? Our debt rate is near zero at the moment, Thomas. Yeah. Uh, and still people here. How are people, how do, how do people react to needing to wear a mask there? Is oh, there okay. resistance to it? Do uh, no. There's very little. There there's is. the occasional time that someone forgets it and they just kind of let them away with it. Because there'll be like nine out of ten people are wearing a mask. Right. Every every shop you go into, there's a uh, antibacterial or anti antiseptic yeah, yeah. uh, hand sanitizer. Stuff your hands, yeah, hand sanitizer. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's walking with a mask. To be honest, after that, good luck. You're fine. Okay. Because we have this, you know, obviously, I'm sure you've seen. We have this strange movement here where people think wearing a mask is being told to wear a mask is infringing on their freedoms, and they, mm. they don't. They, you know, they don't want to do it and they get very angry about it. So, um, yeah, no other country on earth refers to its constitution more than the people <laughs> in the United States. Uh, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I will say, in New Thomas, York, most name, name one of the things in our constitution. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just like giving out about yeah. our government a lot. So, yeah. <laughs> Which I do a lot. I get I get very political. It's fun. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. it's it's funny. But um no, but I was just I was thinking about that how people they are talking about their rights not to wear a mask, and it's, it just goes like you know you know coronavirus doesn't give a fuck if you have rights. Wear the damn mask. <laughs> and it doesn't care about borders, and you know it's oh. yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck if you, which which constitution right is it? I don't. I, man, I, 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 that probably sounded so dumb to you, Jesus. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not at all. We we had a congressman who tested positive today who blamed it possibly on the fact that he wore a mask. He thought maybe it trapped the germs in his mask and gave him the virus. Oh. So that's the level yeah. of yeah. Do you know yeah, who? Uh, my do you know who Kane is from WWE? Yes. Oh, yes. This, this do you know how he's like? Isn't he like the president of something? Or he's not not a president, but uh, he is a mayor somewhere in America at the moment. Somewhere. Where is who? What's his name actually? He is. Yeah, yeah. He's the he's the mayor of Knox County, Tennessee, right? Oh. This guy right here, who constantly yeah. wore a mask, is against them. Of course. <laughs> of course. Like, if someone told him he had to. <laughs> how, how do you feel about that? Because, you know, our government tells us to do it. Um, realistically, they have experts in that know, know best. We, we all agree with this. And um, nine times out of ten, everyone does it. You guys, it becomes like a really big political thing. Well, how do you feel about being told you have to wear a mask? Personally, I fine. I mean, if if that's what it takes to beat this thing, and to keep myself and my family and my neighbors safe, I couldn't care less. Really, um, mm-hmm. I've got one right here. I have friends sending them to me from you know all over the place. I got mine right here. Oh, there's cool. one. Yeah, and there's a, and there, yeah giraffes. Because when I was touring the country, our zoos let you feed giraffes, 
And for some reason, I became known as the guy that goes places and feeds giraffes. So now people send me giraffe things. But um, yeah, and we've got, you know, we've got like a few hundred of the, you know, the disposable ones here. I've got a bandana right here. It's it's not a big deal if it keeps. You were prepared for that question. <laughs> I wasn't. They're just all within arm's reach um, <laughs> because it's a small New York apartment, so everything is within arm's reach. Um, so I think our biggest failing is that we didn't have a clear message coming from our leadership. Um, you know, there some people were in favor of it. Some people weren't. Some people said, take this drug. Some people said, don't take that drug. And it then suddenly it became political because if it was somebody that you supported and they said one thing, then you had you had to go with them. You didn't. And then, and then they politicized the doctors and the scientists. And um, so, so quickly it became not really about beating the virus, but about beating your political opponents. And then once that happened, we were lost. Yeah, I, I think that's the I feel point. like people have never been so politically aware as they have been in, in the last eight years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's gone from like, uh, I like Obama, I'm going to vote for Obama, you know? to uh like everyone's an expert in whatever side they lean on exactly yeah and they pick and choose like it's not about what's factual anymore it's about what supports your side yeah it's um, pick and choose with science like that's kind of got to take yeah, the whole that, thing yeah that's not how science works so uh like, but i, I will say luckily in new york science. in new york i'd say we're, we're and again, probably because it was so rough here at the start, most people wear masks and most people get it. I mean, you run into the, the occasional person who wants to be a problem, but mm. even walking down the street, most most people have it, okay. thankfully. Have you encountered anyone who doesn't believe in the virus? Uh... I haven't encountered people that don't believe in the virus. I've encountered people that don't believe it's serious. I've encountered people that think it's just like the flu. Um, but I haven't encountered anybody who just doesn't believe it exists at all. Okay. Although now there's there are some weird conspiracy theories coming out that maybe Dr. Fauci created it in a lab. Um, so. The, the lab thing makes a bit of sense. Biologists have said there's certain signs that it's a possibility, but there's no yes or no answer to it. Right. Well, but now they're blaming our lead scientist and saying that he did it, which is very strange. That's a, that's a, that, okay, well, yeah, I don't think the evidence <laughs> points towards that at all. Um, no, no, it does. It definitely does not. Yeah, no, that, that, that one's not adding up for me. I'm not going to even challenge that one. Yeah, that's yeah that one just, we'll shake that one off. I think I'll tell you how we're doing over here. Um, they've stopped checking for people that are going abroad for COVID, and they're checking them if they have social welfare. Wow. So that's, that's how we're doing over here, you know? They wow, check if that's... you're if you're unemployed, whether... Right. If you, and then people... I'm pretty sure we had some Texans over here who came on holiday. The most hated oh. people in all of Ireland. And they were on the radio for the entire week, people just bitching about them saying... Oh yeah, they were in my shop, and sure, they weren't wearing the masks, and sure, they spat on me, and you know, it's just like <laughs> then they yeah, were in the west. Kissed me on the lips. Yeah. Wow. Really. Those guys. Those guys were not liked for the week and a bit they were here for. <laughs> they were the most hated people in Ireland for the time they were here, and that's hor That's a horrible feeling. Yeah. But because uh, we have time, Bono, I think Texas. You know? Texas was having like some of the worst amount of cases. Full stop. Texas yeah. was doing so bad at the time they were here, and that. Unfortunately, it was put onto them, and we blamed the infection rate going up in Ireland on literally this group of Texans. I'm sure they didn't have COVID. I'm sure they were fine, but uh, yeah, no. it's very easy to point the finger. Sure. Well, and when they're behaving irresponsibly like that, and and I mean, if you draw attention to yourself in that way, you're gonna you're gonna get fingers pointed at you. Yeah. yeah. And they had the entire Irish population, <laughs> pretty much. Well, I've wow. the, government, the government didn't think they were that bad. They were still blaming it on people, youths, pretty much like teenagers, just going out and meeting their friends. Yeah. Yep. 
So that's what they do. They they don't like the poor and they don't like young people pretty much. I'll be honest the, with you. <laughs> the infection rates coming were like in like the forties. Like people who were in their forties. The debt rates were people in like their eighties. And then like they were like still like, yeah, it's young people. Mm. Who are staying at home, like who can't leave or they're living with their families. Right. 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 A lot of students have to like go straight and move move back in with their families for this. Sure, of course, yeah. And then they were going to make us do our exams where it was like pretty much the the height of what it was over here. And I don't like the government, man. I'm, I'm just not a fan of our current government. Mm. Um, yeah. We had, we had five homeless people died last week while three of the super junior ministers got 16K increases in their wages on their 124K wages, like... Wow. But they they took a pay deduction. They, they took yeah yeah they they were they were <laughs> forced to take ten percent. Everyone was. I I, I don't well, know to deal with that because like junior ministers can't vote for themselves to get more money. That was that came from higher up. Still. But uh, I do appreciate that they did take a ten yeah. percent. Uh, took ten percent off it like. You know that's that's a good thing. I know it is a good thing. Because it shows they're a bit more aware of what's going on than we give them right. credit for. Yeah. Uh, it just got political very fast. You're an actor. Yeah, yeah you're, I you're a very good actor. You're a top class dude. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk um, about politics. We'll leave that for the 6 1 uh, news. I've never seen a guy uh, get sprayed in the face and die in the same way you have before. <laughs> uh, you, your appearance in Gotham was pretty funny. I'm sorry. Um, it was really good acting. Uh, for how you made the character. Well, you know, it's funny. I love that scene. It was so much fun to shoot and yeah. really bizarre, as you would imagine. But that wasn't the scene that was on the page when I went, like, when I when they cast me and I got the script. And I was originally supposed to be beheaded. Oh, wow. Jesus. And, and I was so excited. <laughs> 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 to do that stunt and I thought wow are they going to have like a prosthetic head of me um is that how does that work do they have like spare heads and they just put a wig on it or like what's going to happen and um and then we got the there and, and, this, and then the the script changed and, and you know when I got to set and uh and and you saw how it turned out so rather than getting decapitated I got my uh, I got my partner killed instead but it was still fun it was a lot of fun to shoot <laughs> I, I did love a certain part that you were looking to like a square about this big and then yeah. you were like telling the guys to look. Your face yeah. is like right here and you're telling like, guys, yeah. look. Yeah. I didn't say that exactly, but yeah. Yeah, yeah it I was like, funny. I, like I, I shot that the same week that I shot uh, an episode of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and they couldn't have been like more different experiences. Um, Mrs. Maisel was like so specific and very precise at, you know like you have to hit your mark you have to say exactly what's on the page it has to yeah. be you know it's very controlled and at Gotham the director and I don't know if it was the director or the, the the show in general but at least that director was like okay let's try this let's try this uh let's do this instead uh we'll play let's move the, this set piece over here and we'll do this instead um so it was it was really interesting to have the two experiences close to each other. They were both fantastic, um, but they were they could not have been more different. You are best known, at least on IMDb, and from my own personal experience, best known for your role in uh, the marvelous Miss Maisel. You like just telling a guy like you're drinking too much, you're drunk, shut up. Right. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It was, um, and the actor who I was cut him off after six. Yeah. Rufus Sewell is his name. Um, he is a oh, brilliant actor. actor, a brilliant, I, and that that set he had a really really difficult monologue uh, to to recite in that scene where he was quoting Shakespeare and different poet different poets and and he was getting it all mixed up and it was very heightened and and he was playing drunk at the same time and he came in. And anytime he spoke, you could hear a pin drop on that set because everybody knew and recognized how good he was. Um, mm. So anytime he started his dialogue, 
everything stopped. Like all of the background actors stopped and were listening and paying attention to him. You could tell that the crew was sort of really hyper focused on him. He was, yeah, He's he was, he, he is. And he was uh, just like a, a very relaxed, down to earth, normal, humble guy to, to work with. So that was, yeah, that was, I, that was pretty. He's played a Nazi before as well. Yes, he has. Yeah, uh, he was in The Man in the High Castle. Yeah. He, uh, Great yeah. series. Great series. Um, a little, for a little tough to watch right now. But, yes. Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, it was, uh, it, it's based on a book, and it's where Germany and Japan won the war, cut Italy out of the deal, and divided the world in two. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Alternate just a little, history. A little light television. Yeah, a little. Yeah. <laughs> light, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. Look, if you can play, if you can play a character like that, and you can play a Nazi, and you can, you can do a lot more, like, it's got it going well. Yes, definitely. Yeah. You said uh, much... you worked in, sorry, Dr. Gunn. I was going to say, how much would someone have to pay you for you to play a Nazi? Jesus, man. <laughs> um, I wouldn't be comfortable doing a role like that. Yeah? Mm. You know what's funny? Um, it would depend on the project. It would depend on the role. Um, I, I get teased a lot. Uh, it's, a, it's a running joke amongst a lot of my friends here in New York, especially um, mostly on, on stage. Uh, for a long while, I played really bad people uh i played a lot of racists in shows and had to say and do a lot of things that people were very uncomfortable with so i'm kind of used to that um but it was never done for shock value it was never done just for shock value it was always part it was always an important part of the story um so there were people who would come to me and say, you know, how can you do that? How can you say that to, to your fellow actors on stage? And I just, for me personally, I had to respect my fellow actors enough to go there in the story so that their work could receive the, the response that it deserved. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but... No, it yeah, it, it's all part of the, the, the bigger picture. And if the bigger picture is, is one worth sharing, then, then I'll go there. Um, so I would probably play a Nazi if the project were right. Although I will say the state of the world right now is a little different and uh, it, would, it would take a, a little bit more convincing at the moment for me to do that. Yeah, definitely. You thought about that really long hard. But then you've got crazy. people like Taika Waititi who wrote the bloody script for Jojo Rabbit to play Hitler. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that guy. That guy's so sort of fucking mind, Jesus. <laughs> that was a brilliant movie, though. You, you can't Oh, it was a that. brilliant movie. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. that movie so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah you get a lot of backlash for it anyway. Like, I, uh, I don't even know how I ended up asking that question. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's an interesting question. And, be, you know, it's... It makes sense. That's one of the, the weird things about being an actor is sometimes you you mm -hmm. play not very sympathetic people, to say the least. Um, yeah, like yeah. I mean, I've said some really horrible. People. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, there's there's no story. Um, I, I had to say some really horrible things to some really good friends on stage, but we we know it's Something. our job, and then yeah. we leave, and we you know go out and and have a beer or whatever. Yeah. I think and that's what that a lot of people don't understand hard. is that's exactly what it is, yeah. It's people that can't distinguish between you playing a character and you as an individual. I think, right. remember that guy from Game of Thrones? He, the guy who played Joffrey? Oh, yeah, yeah. He had to quit acting, didn't he? Because people yep. were bullying him because of like the stuff he did in right. the show. Right. That's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do? In Game of Thrones? Oh, he like killed like all, a lot of really cool <laughs> like people were like oh man yeah you're like the worst person alive and people on the streets would like you know scream at him in his face and just you know yeah so you had to quit acting he was a really cool dude though he is a really cool dude still 
Ask people not like being able to distinguish the show from reality. Yeah. Like yeah. if I had the audacity to go up and shout at an actor because they played a villain once, mm. you know, what kind of world are we living in? I definitely, after my first Broadway show <clears throat> was called Ragtime, and I played a, a very racist person in it, and mm. uh, and frequently people would not speak to me after the show because it's not unusual for there to, to be people at the stage door when you come out who are looking for signatures or souvenirs or whatever. Um, and uh, I was surprised at first, and then I, then I kind of accepted it and just chose to chose to think that it meant I was doing my job um, mm. that that a lot of people wouldn't speak to me and and thought that what I was doing on stage was me um, it's interesting people definitely blur the lines yeah which is weird to me but hey yeah some people can find that hard and I, I don't know what what it is I guess it's kind of like not thinking about it too much. Yeah. Like if yeah. you get mad at someone because they just played a character and obviously if you're mad, they did it convincingly. Like that's, that's not very yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. now, how did you guys start your podcast? What, what was the, the impetus behind doing this? Well, George said he'd love to be a dictator to some, some people. And so he said, no. <laughs> Um, I, I wanted to do a podcast for a while. I knew the guys wanted to do it before. I put up a post on Twitter saying, thinking about starting a podcast, who's in? And the lad said, all right, let's do it. And That's the same true. day we started. That's not true. I mentioned to Jared I had human rights, and he said, nope. And then he said, we're doing the podcast, and you're working 24-7, and no bathroom privileges, and laughed. Yeah, nice. Then we have these running gags, that, like he's some dictator. <laughs> yeah. We call them gags, but everybody knows they're real. After about episode 20, they decided, okay, let's try and make Jaren into a big dictator. <laughs> You're just playing a role. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm playing the villain. <laughs> yeah, he's acting. No. <laughs> one day, someone's going to take him seriously and not understand he was kidding, and I'll get cancelled. I write like I like write secret messages in my tweets like SOS and help and all that. No. <laughs> I don't, but I'm actually gonna start doing that. Thanks. If one person <laughs> takes that seriously, that's all it takes. <laughs> Guys, yeah. we gotta help this guy. He's working at the Awfully Irish podcast. <laughs> he but says that reason... he doesn't have human rights anymore. <laughs> the reason I wanted to talk to you today was uh, you you have a lot of experience with. Basically, the whole shebang of what acting is, you've done, you've done nearly all of it. Last part we got to cover is you've done some stuff as a voice actor. Am I right? I have not as much as the other the other things I've done. Um, in fact, the the first real thing I did was uh, the first sort of standalone project was last year when I did a, an audiobook musical, um, which. It was the only only the second one that's ever been done, um, and uh, I loved it. So I'm I'm actually it it won some awards and it you know it, it it did pretty well. So I'm hoping that leads to more, especially now because most actors, for them now, acting is a you know, a microphone in their apartment. Um, some some of my very good friends make their livings from uh, recording audiobooks, um, so. That's some that that whole part of the industry is going to start picking up, I think, um, out of necessity, and so we'll see where it goes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Jim Jim Dale was our narrator, who, uh, in his own right, was a, a Broadway and film actor for many many years, but is best known as the narrator of all of the Harry Potter books, all of the audio books for Harry Potter. Oh wow! Um, yeah, that's cool. And yeah, he's he's pretty amazing. Um, and, uh, so that was, that was interesting to be able to, to, you know, chat with him about what that corner of the industry is like and, and, uh, how to, to further explore it. But yeah. Yeah. Um, to finish off, I want to ask you what your, your, your dream role would be. Ah, uh, um, It's funny. Um, 
because I, I started out in musical theater as a as singing actor. Um, so people usually relate that, at least for me, people relate that to, to musicals, to stage shows. Um, and for me, the, actually, as I've done more TV and film and, and diff, experienced different parts of the industry, I think my, my answer is sort of the same. It hasn't been written yet. Like, mm. I want to do something new. Uh, I want to be the first person to do it. Um, I'd love for it to be something that has an extended life. So, so I would love to do, you know, some sort of, of series or, 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 you know, or even a, a full length film where you, you, you take the time to get to know one character and show all the different sides of him. Um, but I've always been most excited by new works and, um, and being the first voice to speak those words. So my answer to that question really hasn't changed from when I first started my career, um, which is, yeah, it, it, it hasn't been written yet, but I'll, I'll, I'll know it when I see it. Yeah, that's one of the more complex answers I've gotten to those. <laughs> so that, is, that is impressive, though. Um, like, well, what, what do you mean? Like, kind of like a lot of insight on this one particular character. Well, I'm always envious is too strong a word, but I I always watch like long running series, for example, and mm. see a group of actors that get to work together every day, playing the same roles, and the level of of comfort and trust that comes along with that. Um, I've experienced it in in stage shows and Broadway shows where we've been around each other every day for for years. Um, but we're doing the same thing every day. We're doing the exact same show every, well, the same words every day. It's, you know, it changes a little bit every night. Um, but the opportunity to be around a group of actors playing the same characters in different situations over an extended period of time, to me, seems like it would be really freeing and really creative and, um, and that you would be able to explore in a way that you can't when you're when you're when you're a guest on a show you come in you're there for a day or a week or a month and and you you're always the new person so there's always an element of i have to get this right i have to prove myself i have to like show them that i belong here um and they've already established their relationships and you're not really a part of that even with the most welcoming of casts, which is all that I've worked with seemingly, um, but you're still an outsider coming in for a short period of time and then you're leaving. And I've always thought that it would be really amazing to be able to go to work every day for a long period of time exploring the same relationships and groups of people. That kind of sounds like a mixture of like a daily vlog and a Truman show. Yeah. <laughs> That was a great movie. I love, I love the Truman Show. Yeah. Um, well, no, but that would be a cool concept. Cool concept to experiment with. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's a bit like doing a TV show because with TV, yeah. with TV shows, they're, you know, you've got this one character or the, the couple of characters I get, but they they're on life journeys with one another. You spend, Jesus, maybe forty, you know, fifty hours with these same characters. You go, you go through shit exactly. together. You're part of exactly. it, you know, by the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, guys, I think it's already time to finish. Yeah. Um, so, guys, this has been Mark Aldrich. It's been a pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for getting on. It's um, my pleasure. Thank you for asking. Glad, me, we yeah. the, glad we got to pick your brain and ask you some weird questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always up for weird questions. You've been great the whole way through. Thanks very much. Uh, I hope when the, the world gets back to normal, we can meet up for, uh, for a pint. Ah, looking forward to it. We, we, we've got a lot of pints with a lot of people to meet up, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> you, I'm looking forward to it, man. <laughs> and if people want to follow you, they want to check you out, where can they find you? Uh, Insta and, and Twitter at Mark the Ginger. Um, and you can also find my website at uh, markaldrich.net. 
Uh, those are the best ways. And I'm pretty responsive, so find me. That's very, uh, responsive very fast. Well, there's, oh. there's not a lot else to do right now in New York, so <laughs> chances are... No, there's a time for you. Yeah. yeah. So, well, thank uh, you, yeah. guys. Yeah, thanks so much for getting on them. My pleasure. Yeah. Awesome. Right. And so, take a uh, handy. Thanks to everyone who listened. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, tell your grandma, and you'll know, take it handy. Good luck. Good luck.